the mysterious disappearance reveals the dark past of a close friend. After Lori Slesinski, 24 years old, suddenly went missing on her way to a date, her family and friends discovered that her close friend had previously served time in prison for killing her parents. Lori Slesinski lived alone in a mobile home outside the Auburn University campus in Alabama. She worked alongside her close friend named Lindsay Braun at a local mental health care facility. Around 6.30 p.m. on June 10, 2006, Lindsay received a call from Lori saying she would go to the store to buy drinks and then come to Lindsay's house to watch a movie. Lindsay heard the voice of another friend named Rick Ennis at Lori's house through the phone. As they often hung out together, Lindsay wasn't surprised and didn't think much of it. That night, waiting for Lori to arrive, Lindsay called her friend again but got no response, so she went to bed. The next morning, Lindsay began to worry and called Lori's house multiple times, leaving voicemails on the answering machine. After Lori didn't show up for work on Monday, June 12, Lindsay messaged Rick to inquire about Lori but he said he hadn't seen her and was also concerned. The following day, with Lori still not at work, Lindsay went to her house to look for her. She found the door unlocked but no one inside, and Lori's car was missing. Seeing Lori's pet dog lying in the crib, Lindsay let it out and noticed something strange. Lori had been missing for three days, but the crib was clean, the dog looked happy and well-fed, as if someone had been taking care of it. Lindsay also discovered some missing rugs in the kitchen and a removed answering machine. At this point, Lori's mother, Arlene, received news that her daughter hadn't gone to work. Unable to contact Lori, she reported her missing to the police. The surveillance camera at the store captured Lori's last known image, showing her buying drinks but then disappearing. During police questioning, Rick confirmed he was at Lori's house that night but asserted she was fine when he left. Rick revealed that he and Lori grew marijuana together and suggested she might have gone to do some risky dealings. The police searched Lori's house but found no evidence of drug dealing. Rick was suspected due to his contradictory statements. Further investigation revealed that Rick's full name was Daryl Richard Ennis, and he knew Lori when she was still a student, meeting at a bowling alley where he worked. Lindsay didn't know much about Rick, only that he was Lori's friend. Lori's mother, Arlene Slesinski, shared that during Christmas 2005, Lori mentioned Rick had no family and wanted to invite him over to celebrate together. Arlene found him to be very friendly and polite. Four days after Lori's disappearance, her car suddenly exploded on a deserted dead-end street outside a construction site not far from her home. The police confirmed Lori was not in the car. The car's location was over 900 meters from the bowling alley where Rick worked. The fire had destroyed everything inside the car but an investigator reported finding a hand-rolled cigarette nearby. The cigarette was collected but not tested. A missing gas canister similar to the one used at the bowling alley was also found nearby. During a conversation with Rick on the evening of June 14, the police noticed scratches on his arms, as if someone had clawed him. Rick didn't explain the reason for the scratches. Lindsay revealed that a few days before her disappearance, Lori confided that she had received a love letter from Rick. People around also knew that Rick wasn't interested in being just friends with Lori. However, according to Lindsay, Lori had no romantic feelings for her close friend. Later, Rick told a friend that Lori had rejected him. Suspecting this could be a motive for murder, the police searched Rick's car and found handcuffs, a knife, and cleaning supplies. Further investigation into Rick uncovered an unimaginable past. On March 5, 1993, police received a report of a car driving off the highway and crashing into a fence. When they arrived at the scene, they found a 12-year-old boy wearing a backpack. It was Rick who admitted to driving the car. Police checked his backpack and found a kitchen knife and some bullets. When asked, where are your parents, Rick looked directly at the police and coldly said, I killed them both. At Rick's home, authorities discovered the bodies of his mother and stepfather in the bedroom. A bloody baseball bat was broken, and there was blood splattered on the walls and door. Rick's mother had been shot in the face and then beaten to death with the baseball bat. Rick told the police that he had covered his mother's face with a velvet blanket and placed a rose on her chest. His stepfather had also been shot in the face. 
they were murdered just 10 months after getting married. Rick confessed that he was angry because his parents planned to move, and he didn't want to leave his school. The police believed that Rick had lived with the bodies for two days while still attending school. They found a to-do list belonging to Rick, which included killing his stepfather's three daughters, the youngest being 20 years old. According to the daughters, Rick didn't talk and avoided them whenever they visited. At the age of 12, Rick was not tried as an adult. He was sentenced to nine years in a juvenile detention center in Alabama and was released when he turned 21. Despite Rick's past, without direct evidence and no bodies, the police lacked sufficient grounds to charge him. Immediately after the interrogation on June 14, Rick left Auburn. The case went cold. In 2016, 10 years after the incident, Mark Whitaker, a special agent with the Alabama Bureau of Investigation, established a unit to handle unsolved cold cases. He chose Lori's disappearance as the first case. After many efforts, the investigators found dusty files that had been misplaced and shuffled around. They discovered a report sealed in an unopened envelope. According to the report, when Lori went missing in 2006, the police collected evidence from her house but no one followed up until now. The report contained crucial evidence. Rick's DNA was identified in semen found on Lori's bedsheet and in blood stains at the entrance to her house. The three missing rugs from Lori's kitchen reappeared years later. A former roommate of Rick's contacted the police, saying he left the rugs behind. Rick's blood was found on one of the rugs. Mark's team sent the cigarette but found near Lori's car to the forensic laboratory. The results showed that the DNA on it matched Rick's DNA. Investigators stated that this evidence was crucial as it tied Rick to the scene of the car arson. Twelve years after Lori's disappearance, law enforcement had enough evidence to charge Rick. He was arrested on August 6, 2018. At that time, Rick was engaged and living in Virginia, more than 800 kilometers away from his former residence. In an exclusive interview, Rick denied any involvement in Lori's disappearance, stating that he would never harm his close friend. He admitted that Lori had rejected his romantic advances but claimed they remained close and had engaged in sexual relations. Regarding the knife, handcuffs, and cleaning supplies found in his car, Rick explained that he was moving his belongings from an apartment and they had no connection to Lori. As for the scratches on his hands, he said they were caused by a playful dog. However, Rick couldn't explain why his DNA was present in the bloodstain at Lori's entrance. The prosecutor believed that Rick committed the crime due to an obsession with Lori, and the evidence against him was strong, even without finding the victim's body. The prosecution convinced the jury that Lori died because she would never leave without her beloved dog, cutting off contact with her family despite her brother and father passing away from illness. After seven days of testimonies and two days of deliberation, the jury found Rick guilty of killing Lori. He faced the death penalty but it would lead to years of appeals and legal disputes. To spare Arlene from going through all of that, the prosecutor proposed a life sentence without parole for Rick. Arlene agreed. On April 14, 2022, Rick was sentenced to life in prison without parole. He maintained his innocence and vowed to appeal, 